All right, today we're gonna try something a little controversial. <laughs> Before we get into that, if you are new to my channel and this is the first video you're watching, first of all, make sure you click that subscribe button and ring that bell. But secondly, what do you think of this video quality? For all my returning subscribers, I especially want to hear from you guys down in the comments below. What do you think of the video quality of this episode? Believe it or not, I think this is like episode 66 on my channel and I have filmed every single episode so far on this. This is my iPhone 10, but I've recently made a big investment for my channel and I'm now filming on this. You're gonna see the footage from this on the screen. I wonder if we can get like a weird, you know, Shutter Island type of thing going here. Perhaps if I do it this way, we might achieve that. This is my brand new Sony A6400. I've got a shotgun mic on the way for this. I'm not sure when it's gonna get here though. This thing is a beast, look at that. So, I'm hoping this investment is gonna make these videos so much better. For you guys, of course, because it's all about you. And I just make these in the hopes that you enjoy them. Now, for the controversy. It just looks like a dovetail joint, right? Take a closer look. That, my friends, is resin dovetails. Pay no attention to the unfinishedness of this prototype. So, quick backstory, John Malecki, if you don't know who he is, check him out on YouTube. John built a box with resin dovetails. And I saw it, and it sparked this idea in me. So I came out and I built this prototype. Now, if you check out John's video, I'll try and link it down below. You'll see he did a little differently to me. He used clear resin and he did the dovetail bits of wood in the center of the side panels. I wanted to use resin in the traditional manner of dovetails, meaning at the actual pins and tail joint on the corners. So I was really happy with how this turned out. So let's put a mold together. We're gonna make this much, much bigger, do a really big box and see if we can't create something that traditional woodworkers will hate. Because let's face it, so many woodworkers out there stick to the traditional methods. They don't like modern. They like traditional and what they know. So to you guys, I'm sorry, but I think this is cool. It's the dovetails of the future. So let's get to it. In the past, when I've tried dovetails, which is only really twice, I haven't had much luck. They are a very difficult joint when you're hand cutting them to get them to line up perfectly. If you want to learn how to cut them precisely, head on over and check out Matt Esley's channel. He is an amazing woodworker. I spend a lot of time watching his videos and he is just a dovetail pro. Jonathan Katzmoses is another dovetail pro. And today I'm going to be using the Katzmoses jig here to cut these dovetail. So this is the Katzmoses jig. It's my favorite dovetail dovetail jig. It's the only one I've used, but I did a lot of research and I decided that this was my favorite before I got my hands on it. Everything is marked out on the top beautifully for which side correlates to what cut you're making. It's got magnets in there to hold your saw flush against it. This one I'm using is a six to one ratio, but if you want more information on this, head on over to the Katzmoses store and check it out. Jonathan's got some videos on his channel explaining exactly how this works. It really is an amazing bit of gear. So we're going to use this. I've also 
also got a Veritas dovetail saw that I'm going to be using for it. It's got a very high tooth count, which gives you a very fine cut. Veritas are a very high-end company. They make amazing hand planes and woodworking tools. Really top gear. So, with this, combined with the Katz Moses jig, I think we're going to get some nice dovetail. Ideally, if you're going to try dovetails, you want a good vise, like a moxen vise or a leg vise, something nice and sturdy that'll hold the piece still while you're cutting the tails. Unfortunately, I don't have either of those. Now, I am looking at building those, but I don't have a workbench steady enough at the moment to attach them to. So, all I've got is that vice over there, which I'm pretty sure is called a machinist vice, a bench vice, usually used for metal work, I think. But I've cut two bits of pine and placed them on the inside of the jaws so that they don't mark the wood that I'm working on. And hey, it's what I've been using for the last 18 months. I've got by with it, so we'll just use that for today. Let's get to it. Alright guys, so we've got our joint cut now. Let me explain a little bit why I think this is the dovetail of the future. If you've ever cut dovetails before, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. One of the hardest things is clearing out the joints in here so that the mating piece will sit flush and there'll be no gaps. Me personally, I don't do a lot of fine joinery, so when I'm using chisels like this, I do find it rather difficult and the chisel does tend to slip every now and again. The beautiful thing about this joint is that it doesn't matter how smooth we are in here, it doesn't matter if we've got a little bit of leftover material in the center. As long as the edges and the corners of the face and the back of your joint are flush and clean, the resin will actually hide the rest of it. Unless of course you're using clear resin, which I don't intend to do for this build. But because our mating piece is gonna start off in a liquid form, it will mold how it needs to, to fit perfectly with no gaps. You can see on this joint here, I've got a little bit of material left in the center there, but I'm not worried about it and I'm not gonna remove it just so I can show what I mean. The resin will mold around that and because it's got pigment in it, you won't be able to see through anyway. All you'll be able to see is the very edge where the wood meets the resin. So enough talking from me. Let's get on and build a mold so that we can pour the two mating sides for this box. guys so our molds together now I know it looks rather dodgy it's a very old piece of melamine it's actually the same piece I used for the prototype I haven't used any screws to hold it together I'm just relying on the silicon which again is what I did in the prototype so just to make sure that silicon is set up nice and strong I'm gonna leave it now overnight we'll come back tomorrow and we'll start mixing in the resin but while we wait if you're not subscribed now would be an awesome time to do so because looking at my analytics from my last video, a whopping 94% of my viewers are not subscribed. So if that's you, please subscribe. It's just one click of a button and it goes a long way to help me keep making these videos. Yes, you, I'm talking to you. 
Thanks guys, make sure you ring that notification bell as well because there's only about 12% of my subscribers who have got their notifications on. And if you don't have notifications on, you won't know where my videos are out. So ring that bell as well. Now that that's out of the way, I will see you in about 24 hours.
after what seems like two lifetimes, this thing is finally done. Check that out. The lid has a beautiful fit in there. The inside looks awesome. And I am just absolutely stoked with this piece. I feel like it's a good time to throw this out there, but I think we may have just created a world first piece. I've been working on this piece for over two weeks now, and during that time, I've been scouring YouTube and the rest of the internet looking for resin dovetails that are done like this. I've dovetailed the floor in as well, which I've never seen done before. During the time I've been building this, John Malecki released a second video, a bacon tray that he did resin dovetails in. He actually poured the resin, let it cure, and then cut the pins and tails into the adjoining sides and mated them up. So it's similar to this, but it's not a dovetail joint done with pouring the resin. So I'm going to throw it out there, say this is a world first, which is very exciting. If you can prove me wrong with that claim, I would love you to comment down below. Put the link down there so I can see who beat me to this. So originally I finished this box with shellac. I wasn't really happy with how it looked, so I sanded all that off. I then tried spray lac and I didn't end up having enough to do enough coats, so I had to sand all that off as well. And I ended up going good old JD Creations wood goo. This is available on my website. If you want to try it out, head on over to the website and grab a jar and see what you think. This creation has been absolutely insane. I know this video is a bit of a longer one than what I usually do, but this thing took forever to build. I'm so happy with it though. The joints are amazing. Obviously, there's no gaps because the resin started in the liquid form. They're nice, clean dovetails. We dovetailed the floor in, which I said earlier, which I've never seen done before. The lid has a beautiful fit, which is just awesome. If I was to change one thing about this box, it would be the patterns that we got on both of the sides. Obviously, these were the bottom of the pores, so I couldn't control what they looked like at all. On the inside, it looks good because that was the top of the pore and I had control over that. Amazingly, I used the same two colors in every one of these pores, and yet we still ended up with some different colored looking pores. So we've got the blue and gold on the top. It's a bit more orangey on this side with a bit of blue. The bottom's fairly similar to the top, but then this side created some really dark gold sort of look, even though I used those colors in each pore. So that's the only bit that I'm not quite happy about. I don't mind them, they look all right, but it would have been cool to get a pattern like that on all the pores. We got the j &D Creations brand on the inside of the lid there, and that lid just fits beautifully. I actually can't believe it. So guys, thanks for checking out this build. As I said, I reckon this is a world first, and if you can prove me wrong, make sure you comment down below. I would also love to hear from every single person who watches this, what you think of the video quality. As I said, this is my first project shot on my new Sony a6400. So tell me what you think of it. You may have noticed a little bit of inconsistency with the lighting throughout this video. I just wanted to let you know that May has been the month of video improvement. So I bought the new camera, I've redone the lighting in my workshop so that things look a little better. So I apologize that there's different tones of lighting throughout the video, but this will be how it consistently looks now. And I would love to hear again from each and every one of you who watched this video, what you thought of this build. Was it a little too crazy? Was it just what you needed? Is it the future of dovetails? Let me know down below. I haven't decided if I'm selling this piece or not, given that it's a world first, I'm a bit undecided. But if I do decide to sell it, it will be listed on my website. So make sure you head on over there, jndcreations.com.au. And I'm pretty sure you can be guaranteed nobody else in the world is going to have one of these. World first, baby. All right, guys, let's call it there. This is the end of the episode. Thanks for sticking around. If you're still here at this point, comment down below world first. So I know who watched this ridiculously long video. See you next episode, guys.